He's one tough cream puff, and we are ranking all of his games today. Most of his games today. Yeah, most of his games. I'm not sure I have access to all of them. Looking through the list of Kirby Media on Wikipedia, I think I've got like 95% of the games that I'm able to actually review, but there might be some I've missed out on. And if I do, my apologies in advance. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jay. Welcome to Square Pegs. Kirby is something that I do have a confession to make. I wasn't a big fan of until a couple of years ago. You see, when my son was growing up, he wanted to play Kirby Planet Robobot. And my exposure to Kirby was when Kirby's Dream Land released, I was just discovering the 16-bit generation. So I was too old for Kirby. I was too cool for Kirby. So when he wanted to play Planet Robobot, I kind of reluctantly gave in. I was like, yeah, he's like seven. That's kind of the right age. And I watched him play it, and I was like, this game is fantastic. This is a brilliant designed game. So over the last couple of years, I've gone back and I've played all of the Kirby games and I was wrong. I was completely and totally wrong on that. So today, I want to go through all the Kirby games that, again, I have access to, and apologies if I miss out on anything. I'm going to rank them from S down to an F. Spoilers, there's no failures. So what do you say? Let's kick things off on the Game Boy with Kirby's Dream Land. I'm going to make an effort to keep these reviews fairly quick just because there's like 30 games, and I don't want you guys to be stuck on this video for like an hour, so we're going to kick things off on the Game Boy in 1992 with Kirby's Dream Land, and this is where it all started. And I will admit, when I first played this game, I didn't really care for it. But going back to it now, I actually see the charm inherent in the design. Everything that was established in this original title still carries forward to this day. And one of the most important things that's carried forward is the spectacular music that the series is known for. This game is great. It's a lot of fun. Doesn't have a huge challenge level to it, but it is still really enjoyable to play. So this is one of those ones you can just kind of slap in your Game Boy and have some fun with. I'm going to give Kirby's Dream Land an A. Kirby's Adventure on the NES came out in 1993, and it's a fairly accurate continuation of the Game Boy version. There's obviously improvements. I mean, it's in color now, so that's a big win. And the game is still really fun to play. I can't take too much away from it based on the fact that it just does everything the Game Boy did just a little bit better. Now, that doesn't mean it's a necessarily leaps and bounds experience past what the Game Boy game did. It's still a great experience overall. Not quite perfect, though. I'm going to give Kirby's Adventure on the NES an A. It's edging towards an S, but it's it's going to be at an A based on other games that are on this list. I really wanted to like 1993's Kirby's Pinball Land on the Game Boy, and truth be told, I do. I'm a sucker for video pinball, but I'm also a very harsh judge of video pinball games, and this one does some stuff that just doesn't quite work for me, and... And it's not really necessarily a fault of the game, per se, it's more the limitations inherent in the hardware. The screen switching when you go up or down on the playfield is a little bit jarring. The physics are a little bit flighty, the ball kind of glides, doesn't really feel like it has any weight, it just kind of goes wherever it wants to. And that just kind of takes me out of it a little bit. And now again, this is because I am very, very picky about my pinball experiences in video game form, so... It's still a good game. It's still fun. I'm going to give it a B. I think that's a fair grade for it. It's not quite an A. It's definitely not an average game. It's above average, but I'm going to give it a B. 1994's Kirby's Dream Course saw Kirby's first entry on the SNES, and this might be the one that gets the most kind of eyebrows raised at it, because I just don't much care for this game. It's fine for what it does. It's just not something that I really love, you know what I mean? It's it's fine, but at the end of the day, it's kind of just a really average middle-of-the-road mini-golf game with some kind of wonky gameplay elements that just never really connected for me. I know a lot of people love this one, and I'm not going to take that away from you. It's just, it's not a game that works for me. If it works for you, by all means, I'm so stoked that it does, and I would love to know what you love about it. Let me know in the comments down below, but for me, it just doesn't connect. I'm going to give it a C. Much like Dream Course, Kirby's Avalanche is another game that just doesn't land for me. This is a block-dropping puzzle game. I'm pretty sure this is a panel to pawn clone. And while I like those sometimes, it's not something that I ever really go out of my way to play, and that's kind of what's happening here with Kirby's Avalanche. It's fine. It works. It looks really nice for what it is. I will say that. I think the, the visuals in the game are spectacular, and the sound is great. It's just not a game I really enjoy playing. That said, there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't connect for me. I'm going to give it a C. I think it's an average title. 
And again, if this is something you dig, let me know in the comments down below. 1995 brought us Kirby's Dream Land 2 on the Game Boy, and there's nothing inherently wrong with this game. It's fine. It works. It plays a lot like the original Kirby's Dream Land that released on the Game Boy, and there's nothing really wrong with that whatsoever. It's just, it doesn't really do much to make itself stand apart from the original, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I haven't spent a ton of time with this, so this is a very weighted grade. It could definitely be better the further into the game I play, but my first impressions of the game just, it was just kind of there. It's good. It's a very good game. That's like saying that, oh, I don't like chocolate chip cookies. I need to have chocolate chunk cookies, if you know what I mean. It's still good. It's still fun to play. It's getting a B, with an asterisk that it could go up the further into the game I play. 1996 on the SNES brought Kirby Superstar, and I'm kind of two minds of this game, so playing it, I, I like it. I like that there's a bunch of different games in here, but none of them really feel fully fleshed out. They just kind of feel like a bunch of reskins, and that's not really what I'm looking for, not really what I was hoping to get here. And again, this is probably a limitation of the hardware, probably a limitation of the system, but I don't know. It's good. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not something that I really felt any kind of excitement playing. I was just like, oh, hey, that's another Kirby game. And it didn't, like, take a leap visually either. So it wasn't something where it's like, oh, this is clearly a 16-bit Kirby game. It was just like, eh, it's just, it's more Kirby. And that's not a bad thing. It's still good. It's a B. It's just gonna take a couple more games before we get to that first really perfect game on the SNES. Back to the Game Boy in 1997, and that brings us to Kirby Star Stacker, and again, it's it's a Kirby puzzle game. These just don't click for me. This, I think, is a Columns clone. I could be wrong on that. I, I don't know. It just, it's not terribly fun to me. It looks good. It sounds good. It plays fine. It's just not a game for me. So I'm going to give Kirby Star Stacker a C. Feel free to disagree if you think it's a much better game. I would love to know your thoughts behind it. Just doesn't work for me. 1997 takes us back to the Super Nintendo with Kirby's Dream Land 3. Now, I want you to remember something I said a couple of games ago talking about the first perfect entry. And that is a spoiler for the grade, but Kirby's Dream Land 3 is stunning. Visually, it's absolutely superlative. The sound quality is great. The gameplay is magnificent. It steps itself up from the original Kirby releases in so many degrees and makes itself so much better by putting extra attention to detail into the little things. The music sounds better, the visuals are there, so you actually look at it and say, this is what a 16-bit Kirby game should look like. The animation systems, for a game that is simplistic in the design of its creatures and its characters, the animation systems are so much better. The game plays better. Kirby's Dream Land 3 on the Super Nintendo gets an S. This is the first of any Kirby game in my eyes to achieve a perfect score, but I can tell you this right now, it's not going to be the last. Kirby has finally gone to the third dimension on the Nintendo 64 with Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards, and I had never played this game before this year. I played it on the Nintendo Switch online service, I really enjoyed it, and I think there's a lot of really solid things here that are set up for further games down the road. Now that said, there are some things that it takes a misstep on. So one of the big things that we lose from our 16-bit entries is that the powers don't really have a distinct costume anymore. It's just kind of an effect. The gameplay is good, but it is a little bit wonky in the third dimension. It's not quite right, and there are some incredibly frustrating boss fights to be had in the game. However, I think it's a really solid first entry into a 3D Kirby game. I like it. I think it sounds good. I think it plays good. I'm going to give it a B plus. I'm going to give it a B plus. It's almost an A. It's not quite to the excellent level, but it is definitely above average. On now to the Game Boy Color, and we have what was legitimately the most shocking game on this list as I'm playing through things. So before today, literally, as I'm recording this on January 25th, 2024, I had never played Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Now, I am playing this on the Nintendo Switch Online service, so I am using my Pro Controller in place of a Game Boy cartridge. But if it's anything like this experience, that game is sheer brilliance. What a fantastic idea for a game. Brilliant use of accelerometers. 
fantastic gameplay elements making him jump by picking your Game Boy up, or in this case, your controller up quickly to make Kirby jump up in the air. This game is brilliant. This is absolutely fantastic. No lie, this might be my favorite game on the list. Kirby Tilt and Tumble is an absolute S. It's the epitome of Nintendo and HAL Laboratories at their absolute best. Moving on now to what is one of my absolute favorite handhelds of all time, the Game Boy Advance, and we have 2002's Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland. I can't help but say anything but positives about this game. It has a gorgeous look, the sound is magnificent, it's an improvement in like every single possible way over Kirby's Dream Land 3, which I already thought was a perfect game. This somehow does it better. Now. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's now portable, and it looks this good and plays this good, but it's just a brilliant title. Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland for me is a perfect game. This also gets an S. Alright, we're going now to the GameCube. This is 2003's Kirby Air Ride, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of this game. I think it looks spectacular. I think it sounds spectacular. I think it plays pretty boringly, if I'm being honest with you. The boost button doesn't really do anything for me. The fact that you're always in motion and you just kind of control your angle using the joystick, eh, I mean, it's all right. It's, it feels a little bit like them trying to make a Kirby SSX game, if that makes any sense. But the overall experience just, eh, just doesn't do anything for me. It's not a bad game. Like, it's, it's still fun. It's still well made. It's just not something that speaks to me. So I'm gonna give Kirby Air Ride a B. And I can totally see why people would put this at an A or an S. It's just, it just doesn't work for me. Back to the Game Boy Advance, and in 2004 we get Kirby and the Amazing Mirror, and this is a really, really well done game. The visuals in the game are absolutely beautiful. I think they're some of the best 16-bit style graphics that we've gotten. I did kind of prefer Kirby's Dream Land 3 with kind of that pastel look. This is more of a hot pink version of Kirby, but it still looks really good. The animation system is great, the actual levels are really creatively designed, and the power-ups are really fun. That's about all you really need to say about it. It's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think it's perfect. There's something missing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I am going to give it an A because I think it's a great title. It's just, it just falls a little bit short of perfection. 2005 moves us onto the Nintendo DS, and this is where we start to see them taking some risks and some chances with the way that the games play. This is Kirby Canvas Curse. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is that this is not a traditional Kirby game. This isn't a side-scrolling platformer. This is when we actually have to kind of draw paths for Kirby, who is constantly in motion, to move. You also have to draw barricades to move him in the other direction. I think it's really creative. I just think it's a little clunky. Now, it's not as clunky as it's going to appear on screen right now. I want to remind folks that this is a DS emulator, so it's playing with a mouse, a little bit less fidelity than using a stylus. But, uh, I don't know, there's just... There are other types of game like this that Kirby makes later on that do better than this one does. So I'm going to give Canvas Curse a B. It's still a fantastic game. It's just there are other entries that do it better. All right, we're halfway through. Let's take a look and see where the rankings are right now. Sticking on the DS, but moving up a year, this is Kirby Squeak Squad. And this one's a more traditional Kirby adventure. So. Canvas Curse was a bit of a departure. This one's kind of back in the swing of things that we normally expect from Kirby, and it's excellent. It's a really well done game. The look is great, the sound is great, the gameplay is fantastic, it makes good use of both screens. I just think it's a fun game. I'm gonna give this one an A. I can see an argument for it being lower, but for me, I just had some fun with it, so it gets an A. So if you remember my review for Kirby Superstar back on the SNES, I gave it a B because it just kind of felt like more of the same. Now, the thing about Superstar Ultra is that it does improve that original concept. It's the same core game. It just improves it in slight ways. There's better gameplay options. The look is better. The helper system is a little bit more logical. And I just, it just works better for me for some reason than the original release. So, if the original got a B, that's going to move this one up a little bit. This one is going to get an A. Moving over to the Wii now in 2010, and this is Kirby's Epic Yarn. And this game does, like, legit everything right for me. There's so much that I love about this. It has one of the most unique looks I've ever seen in a video game. Really 
only supplanted by like Yoshi's Woolly World and stuff like that, where it feels like the material it's referencing. The gameplay is spectacular. It's fast, it's fluid, it's fun. It works great on the Wii Remote. It's just kind of an excellent experience from top to bottom. The sound is there as well. It's really good. I can't find any complaints about this one. I've played this one a lot. This is one of the first Wii games I actually remember really loving. I'm going to give Kirby's Epic Yarn on the Wii an S. Back to the DS now, and this is Kirby's Mass Attack from 2011. And I like the concept behind this, and I think the grade on this one might go up the more I play it. I haven't played a ton of this one yet, but I really like the concept of it. So, as Kirby, you know you eat a lot of stuff, and the idea behind this one is that the more you eat, the more Kirby's will show up on screen. And you need to have more Kirby's to enter certain parts of levels. Like, there's a certain part in the first stage where you need to have more than two Kirby's in order to pull something down. So you need to collect fruit, you need to gain mass. And I like the idea. I like the concept. I just, I'm not a huge fan of the controls. It just, it doesn't quite feel right. It's a little bit off. Like, I was never a fan of DS games that used the stylus as, like, an attack mechanism or something like that. It just didn't work for me. I think this could be an A, but for right now, just where I'm at with it, Kirby Mass Attack gets a B, although I'm going to keep playing it, so that grade could change down the road. One of the constants in the world of Kirby is that there's a lot of remakes in his series, and this one isn't a remake, but we'll see a remake of this down the road. This is Kirby's Return to Dreamland on the Wii. This released in 2011, and this is a spectacular game. Just top to bottom, it's a spectacular game. It plays really well, the sound is on point, the gameplay is paramount to, like, everything in it. It's just a fantastic game. Where it kind of falls down a little bit is the controls. I, I, like, I don't dig the Wii Remote as a sideways controller, as a standard controller. It just doesn't work for me, so... It, it's knocked down a bit from being perfect. Like, it's so close, just doesn't quite get there. So I'm going to give Kirby's Return to Dreamland on the Wii an A. But we'll be talking about this again at the end of the video. Our first entry on the 3DS in 2014 takes us to Kirby Triple Deluxe, and I really like this game. And if I'm looking at just the core game for Triple Deluxe, it's pretty darn close to perfect. You have a spectacular platforming game starring Kirby. You have some really fun unlockables, including a mode called DDD Tour where you get to play as King DDD later on. There's a couple of things that bring it down, though. Kirby Fighters is a add-on that's on the cartridge. Eh, it just doesn't really do much for me. DDD's Drum Dash is a rhythm game, which I really didn't care for, so those drag the overall package down just a bit, just a smidge. So it goes from an S to an A. But again, if I'm looking at just the game itself, looking at just Kirby Triple Deluxe, it's an S. I just, I just think that the overall package gets brought down by those add-ons. Moving over now to the Wii U, the much beleaguered but much loved Wii U. In 2015, we have Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. So remember that part about Canvas Curse where I said there's going to be games that do it better? Welcome to that game. Kirby and the Rainbow Curse is absolutely brilliant. The look of the game is legitimately probably my favorite look of any Kirby game. I think it's absolutely stunning. It feels like a claymation video come to life. I love the design of it, I love the level play, I love the use of the stylus to draw the paths, it just feels better. There's more fidelity in this game, it just works better for me. I can't find anything really to complain about with this one. I love it, it's one of my favorite Kirby entries, I think it does so much perfectly well. I'm giving Kirby and the Rainbow Curse an S. And now to the game that changed my entire perception of the Kirby series. In 2016, on the 3DS, we got Kirby Planet Robobot. And this game is absolutely brilliant. The design is fantastic. He gets a mech suit, people! He gets a mech suit! Kirby mech! How incredible is that? The powers are great. The ability to get powers in the mech suit, not just as Kirby, makes it even better. The imagination in this game is fantastic. The 3D work is great. Again, this is emulated, so it's running a little bit rough, but the actual cartridge on a 3DS is pristine. It's spectacular. And the other side about this one that kind of brought down Kirby Triple Deluxe, but doesn't bring it down on Planet Robobot, is you get Team Kirby Clash and Kirby 3D Rumble. 
Now, Team Kirby Clashes, it's all right. It's not a bad game. It's an action RPG, and it's okay. But Kirby 3D Rumble is fantastic. It's a wave shooter. It's great. Robobot is brilliant. Robobot, the whole package, is fantastic. It's perfect. It gets an S. Time for Hal to try something weird and wacky again with Kirby. This is 2017's Kirby Battle Royale on the 3DS, and most of this game is really good. It's really solid. It's just not terribly challenging. So it's a little bit different of a title. It's kind of a mix of Smash Brothers and Mario Party and Zelda, if that makes any kind of sense. There's overworld engagement that you have to go through, and you have kind of Zelda combat there. There's some Smash-style games, and then there's Mario Party-esque minigames. And unfortunately, none of them feel fully fleshed out. It feels like a bunch of ideas that kind of got squished together in hopes of finding something great. And we just ended up with something that's just good. It's going to get a B from me. It's not great, not perfect, but it's not bad. On to Nintendo's latest console. In 2018, we got Kirby Star Allies on the Nintendo Switch. And the best thing I can say about this game is that it looks fantastic. The style of the game is gorgeous. The soundtrack is great. The gameplay is just incredibly dull. It feels way too dumbed down. Like This is such a far step back from games like Planet Robobot, like Rainbow Curse, like Triple Deluxe. It just doesn't work for me. Like So my son, when he originally played this, he was eight years old. And this wasn't something that he thought was challenging or even fun. He just thought it was a boring experience. And that really brought him down because he loved Robobot so much. And I'm kind of in the same boat. It's a really middle of the road game for me. I'm gonna give Star Allies a C. Super Kirby Clash was next in 2019 on the Nintendo Switch and at kind of like Star Allies, that doesn't really do much for me. I didn't care for the original run of Kirby Clash. I don't much care for Super Kirby Clash. It's just, it's just space filler. I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. I don't think it's terribly fun. I don't think it's terribly well made. It just doesn't work for me. Super Kirby Clash is very middle of the road. Like, I'm saying all these negative things about it, and it's still solid. It still performs exactly the way it should. It just isn't something that I really want to play. So I'm going to give it a C. And then in 2020, we had Kirby Fighters 2. Now, 2020 was a weird time because, you know, the world had shut down, so we were getting some kind of strange games, but Kirby Fighters 2 is the sequel to Kirby Fighters, and yeah, just it it's the same thing. It's just prettier on the Switch. It's middle of the road. It's not a great experience. It's fine. It's more fun multiplayer than single player, I can tell you that much, but uh, it, overall, it's not something I ever need to play again. I'm going to give it a C. But we're going to wrap things up strong, and the second to last game on this list is 2022's Kirby and the Forgotten Land, and this game is an absolute revelation. The picture-perfect experience for a 3D Kirby game. The look is spectacular. The gameplay is varied and fun. The ability to find all the different objects that you're able to inhale and use, whether it's the vending machine or the air cannon or the car, it works. There's nothing in this game that misses. The boss fights are challenging, the level designs are creative, the soundtrack is magnificent. This is such a great game, and if you haven't played it, if you are put off by Kirby at all and you haven't played this one, you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing it, because it's brilliant. Kirby in the Forgotten Land gets an S. And last, but certainly not least, is Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Now, I liked the original Return to Dreamland. I thought it was fantastic. And this one is a remake of that game. Now, it would be real easy to look at it and say, you know what, it's just a remake. It doesn't really do anything different, but it's perfect. It's absolutely fantastic. Like everything about this game just works. The look is fantastic. The gameplay is wonderful. It's got a little bit of a different style to it. It's actually added some new abilities and I really like the sub-games they added, but the other side of that, too, is that they added the Magalore epilogue. So you're able to play his story through the entire game. I'm, I'm really so happy that this game got made and ended up getting released, because 
while a lot of Kirby games do fall into the realm of being a remake and they're just kind of, eh, kind of plussed, this one is magnificent. I'm going to give Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe an S. All right, there you have it, my friends. My rankings of every Kirby game, for the most part. I'm sure there's some I missed. Apologies if I missed out on your favorite one. If there's something here that you disagree with, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to see your opinions on it, and I would love for you to change my mind. If I'm wrong, let me know why. Let me know in the comments down below as well what other game series you would like to see me rank. I'm kicking around the ideas of doing a Mega Man X. We'll see. That one will be especially tough because I'm actually not a huge Mega Man X fan, but I would love to hear from you what games you would like to see me rank. Until next time, folks, I have been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me today. So what do you say? Remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. Talk to you soon.